Hello everyone, I got done seeing The Batman and it was awesome. Matt Reeves delivers one of the best Batman films ever made. What can I say? He's vengeance. The Batman is a new incarnation of the character on film from director Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves is one of the best filmmakers of our era. I love his films with Cloverfield and then Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes. He delivers a tour de force film, a film noir that incorporates Batman's detective skills from the comic books. But if it was rolled into the animated series, Telltale Video Games, and David Fincher 7, it is a dark film and definitely pushes the PG-13 rating. Before I continue, I'll go over my non-spoiler review, and then at the end of this, I'll have a disclaimer and we'll discuss spoilers. Robert Pattinson, when he was cast, I was just like, really? The guy from Twilight? And you know, I've seen Good Time, I've seen his other films, but I was just like, really? Batman? I couldn't see it. My mother thankfully told me, it's like, hey Fred, you remember how you felt about Daniel Craig as a 007? Well, like Daniel Craig as a 007 and Heath Ledger as a Joker, Robert Pattinson proved us all wrong. And to be honest, I was won over with that first DC fandom teaser. If they just had that teaser alone, that would have set me until this movie. And this movie not only lived up to all its hype, it went beyond it and delivered in every single way. This is one of the most purest Batman films I have ever seen and it's our first solo Batman film in 10 years and it's funny how like with the years that end in twos 92 gave us the Penguin Batman and Catwoman 2012 gave us Batman and Catwoman with Dark Knight Rises and now we have the Bat Cat and Penguin and the Batman Robert Pattinson fully immersed himself in the role. He reminds me so much of like the animated series. Even his relationship with Selena Kyle, their relationship is done very well. Like the comics and cartoons and video games, but like his voice is done so well, but the way he moves, he's a Batman that's very sure of himself, you know? And he is Batman for the majority of the movie. We don't see that much Bruce Wayne, but it's not called Bruce Wayne. It's called the Batman and it delivers with the Batman. Gotham City, the set design of this is amazing. It's a very dilapidated, ugly looking city. And we really get to learn about the atmosphere of this world. Everything is set up very much for a film. It is purely like the comic books, but on a more grounded level. Think Christopher Nolan, but to the next level. And I love the bat suit, how grounded it looks, but then how like tactical it looks. It reminds me a little bit of the 1940s, a little bit with like the cape and collar, almost like a vampire, but if it was rolled into like the Batman Noel suit or the Lee Bermejo artwork from the comic books. Zoe Kravitz is perfect as Selena Kyle. I love her in this role, very much like the long Halloween meets Batman year one. And I have to say, there's a lot of influences from the comic and then we have Colin Farrell, who is completely unrecognizable as the Penguin. Oh my god, that person needs to win the Oscar for Best Makeup next year, completely. We also have John Tatura as Carmine Falcone, and Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner James Gordon. I love Jeffrey Wright in the 007 films as Dr. Narcisse in Boardwalk Empire. He is a wonderful James Gordon. We really get to see Batman and James Gordon work on cases. We get to see more of the detective side that we know from the comic books and I love that. It's a very suspenseful, tense film. You're always on edge during this movie. I will say that it is a bit long, but it's worth it. It's a slow burn film that has a worthy payoff. The style of it, it is pure Batman. And I love how he's in year two because, you know, it's not the origin tale again. No, this Batman's already been operating for two years. And James Gordon is pretty much the only person that trusts the Batman. The GCPD, not all the police trust this freak. And he is very much a freak, you know. It kind of reminds me of Michael Keaton in some way, but with a bit of Bell, a bit of Affleck, a bit of everyone. And it creates its own identity. Again, going with the set design, I also love how gothic it looks. This Gotham City feels very gothic. And even Robert Pattinson. Yeah, man. What can I say? Very grunge, emo, goth. I just imagine Bruce Wayne listening to The Cure in some way. And who could forget Paul Dano as the Riddler? Bring out the gimp. No, he looks like a gimp at first, but this Riddler is a very haunting Zodiac killer type. And to be honest, that's how the Riddler probably would be if he existed in real life. I think Paul Dano is a wonderful actor. He's been in many films. You know, I think about Prisoners, and he definitely brings that level of intensity and just kind of like awkwardness to this role. 
And then Andy Serkis is Alfred. He isn't in the film as much as you think he would be, but again, he portrays a brilliant Alfred. To be honest, there hasn't been a bad Alfred on film. And Alfred is kind of distant to Bruce Wayne. I feel like their relationship is kind of cold and distant towards one another. But at the same time, you can definitely see that like Alfred isn't his father. You know, it's the guy who raised him after the parents died. And even though he thinks of himself as a father, he knows that he needs a real father, Bruce Wayne just is like, you're not my dad. Like, why do you care? You're not a Wayne. So you get to see some of that there, which we also got to see explore in Batman Begins with Christian Bell and Michael Caine. Batman is trying to solve these murders that the Riddler is committing, and it's like this wild Easter egg hunt kind of goose chase, and it's like one long mystery, and I love that. You know, if you love detective shows, if you love the comic books of Batman, if you're a Batman fan and you know about him being the world's greatest detective, we finally get to see that element of the character presented on screen in Matt Reeves creates a superb Batman film, a superb comic book film, and just a superb film, period. Like, this movie is just amazing on all levels. And I also love how they use the projection system that The Mandalorian uses. There's some beautiful shots in this. It's a well-crafted film, and this shows you what happens when the studio decides to not mess with a person's vision, not edit the film down, lets an auteur have their own creative vision with complete freedom. This is what you get. This Joker... Zack Snyder's Justice League, this is what you get. And you know, every Batman is different. I love how the films basically showcase different interpretations from the comics. This is very much your graphic novel, DC Black Label, DC film, Batman film. The Batmobile is wonderful. It's a muscle car. There's some great scenes there. If you're a Batman fan, you're gonna have a smile on your face and leave this film feeling satisfied and happy. And I enjoyed it. I got me a Batman cup at Cinemark and my mom, she's uh, autoimmune compromised. So COVID was finally good in our area where we were able to take her to the movie for the first time in two years and it was worth it. And if I had to give it a score, I'd give it an A. For anybody going in, even if you're not a fan, I think you're gonna enjoy the mystery element of this. It definitely is that film noir type of film. But if you're a Batman fan, this is everything you've been wanting to see from a Batman film. So. Those are my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below once you see the Batman. Let me know what you think of the film and uh, be sure to check out more videos on the channel. Before I continue, we're about to get to spoilers. So here we go. Spoilers, wow. I love the narration of the film. It very much reminded me of like Ben Affleck's Daredevil from 2003 with a little bit of Warshack from Watchmen and most of all, a Batman comic book. It reminded me of a good old fashioned hard boiled film noir. I love seeing the Iceberg Lounge, how Penguin was shown Oswald Cobblepot. I love what Colin Farrell did, John Turturro's Carmine Falcone. Again, elements with the Waynes being kind of corrupt, not as great people as they made out to be. It reminded me a lot of the Telltale series, especially the Lady Arkham element. Like They replaced that with Edward Nashton, the Riddler. And for a while, even my brother had this theory, he was wondering if it was Hush. It could be kind of like it because he has a mask similar or there could be a greater villain. Who knows, but I love what they did with the Riddler. He is a dark, demented Riddler. That scene with the interrogation, oh man. Like I said, this movie is just so tense and it puts you on the edge of your seat from beginning to end. I love the use of Something in the Way by Nirvana. Like I had a smile on my face, like the first 10 minutes and the use of Something in the Way told me that this was already gonna be one of the best Batman films ever. Like, that's the moment where I'm like, this movie is going to be a damn good movie and one of my all-time favorites, like, already. The film wasn't even all the way into the first hour, and I'm like, this is already the greatest thing ever, you know? I love it, because a lot of movies have songs in the trailer, and they never feature them in the movie, and this one did. Batman goes through an arc in this, you know? He's all about being, I guess, an icon of vengeance. And he realizes that he has to become something more to instill hope in the city. The stakes in this, you know, there's a lot of people saying it was anticlimactic. I don't know what they saw, but Gotham City flooding, the whole showdown with election night, like that was crazy with the mayor. I love that stuff. That stuff reminded me of Batman No Man's Land. The Riddler stuff and everything else reminded me of Batman Ego. And then Long Halloween with Carmine Falcone, Selena Kyle being the daughter of Falcone and like what happened with her mother was insane. And, you know, thinking about the reporter that uh, Thomas Wayne had Carmine Falcone murder, I wonder if it's going to be related to Thomas Elliot or even they're going to pull the whole Vicky Vell thing like Lady Arkham and Telltale. I don't know. It might not go anywhere, but it's just some theories. 
overall, I love how Jeffrey Wright's Commissioner Gordon, how he works with Batman and how they go to like an abandoned construction site. That stuff was done very well. The whole underbelly of Gotham was done very well. The Iceberg Lounge scenes, different like places they meet up in the, the docks. And that chase, I wouldn't say it's the best chase of all the films, but it's definitely the most intense and realistic. Like there's some heavy stuff there. And you know, without the Batmobile having any weapons, that was a pretty intense chase. You could totally tell that Bruce had like an old racing car that he modified to become this Batmobile. I love how corrupt everything is. There's a lot of stuff that actually relates to like our real world in modern day. There are a lot of stuff addressed, social issues in a very indirect and direct way uh, to that ending with a Joker. At first I thought it was me Walking Phoenix because I had a reference to the song in Joker, but you had that kid from Dunkirk. One of the Eternals is in a big Joker. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think they need a Joker. He's been done enough. But at the same time, I'm like, they should save him for the final Pattison film, you know? Just have other villains and then the final showdown would be like Riddler returning and then like Joker and him facing off. I think that would be so amazing. For the next film, I could totally see Penguin being like the main baddie. And, you know, with a new DA, you have a DA that's out. Maybe introduce Harvey Dent. Who knows? The funeral scene was intense. The mayor's kid, I sometimes wonder if he's going to be Robin one day. I know, wishful thinking, but, like, I love how they address social media and how, like, it can be weaponized as well. Like, that was something different with the Riddler and his followers. I thought that was done in a really cool way. And just, it was just so dark. Like, damn, I love it. And I know people are going to probably complain about this film being too dark and needing to have light bulbs. And like, it's Batman. This is Batman. And this is a Batman I love. Batman needs to be solo. He doesn't need to be in other worlds. He needs to be, just have his own movies. And I kind of like that. As much as I like the DCEU, they don't know what to do with it. You need to have somebody with a vision. But most of all, these films are better when there's a hint of a bigger world, but they're standalone movies. Because I've loved Joker. And I love the Batman. And they both were standalone movies that are among one of DC's best and just not only great comic book films, but like I said earlier, great films. Pattinson's voice, I love how he uses the eye contacts to record stuff. I thought that was very uh, cool how they did that. Uh, there's just so much to process. I'm trying to see if I covered everything. Selena Kyle, again, I love how he had, she had stray cats. She totally reminded me of like Batman Year One, with a little bit of like Halle Berry and Eartha Kitt's Catwoman. I love it. I love how they had her character, even Anne Hathaway to a degree, with being the safe cracker, how Batman moved. That last part was just so intense. Matt Reeves created a slow burn, but it was an engaging mystery. You never lost interest. And even though it did feel a little slow in the beginning, once it hits hour one to hour two, the film goes by very fast. And by the end of it, it does have those cheer, applaud, applause worthy moments where you're just like, yeah, Batman is being Batman and fighting crime and doing what he does best. I'm just moved by this film like this. It's just so great to see a good Batman film. And it's his first solo film in 10 years. And what can I say? It was well worth the wait. And Robert Pattinson is never going to have to worry about being typecast or being looked as Edward Cullen ever again because he is the Batman. He's vengeance. And vengeance is sweet. Alfred being attacked was just intense. And I really thought they were going to kill him off. You know, that was kind of a reference to Affleck's script with the whole Deathstroke battle. I love the stakes here. There's some scenes that really move you. That scene with Alfred and him in the hospital almost brought me to tears. The romance, you could really feel the chemistry between Zoe Kravitz and Robert Pattinson in this movie. Like the tension was there and it was probably the best bat and cat relationship I've seen since the animated series Telltale and probably Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Keaton. And it makes it heartbreaking by the time it reaches its conclusion because you know they have to go separate ways, but Batman's almost tempted. And that could be something, a dynamic to explore in the future. Also, that scene where you thought he figured out who Bruce Wayne was, I kind of wondered, did he like do that to cover for him? But I really thought he was figured out Bruce Wayne, like Pattinson's acting, the eyes are so intense, filled with rage. I've heard comparisons to Ryan Gosling and Drive, you can definitely tell that. I'm gonna have to see this film multiple times, but right now it's probably under Dark Knight trilogy for me, definitely over Dark Knight Rises in 89, but probably under Dark Knight and Bam Begins, but it may be my favorite Batman movie after multiple viewings and uh, what can I say? Uh, I think I'm gonna listen to Something in the Way by Nirvana now.
Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Batman and my brief spoiler review. Again, let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite moment from the Batman? What did you think of this film? I personally loved it. It's one of the year's best and definitely just one of the best films I've seen in a very long time. Matt Reeves is amazing. And yeah, this movie, ooh. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out these other Batman related videos for more content. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Till next time.